Hello everyone, um, today I'm going to be showing you a game between Gary Kasparov and Hikaru Nakamura. So um, this is one of Gary Kasparov's last games because I think he retired recently. He doesn't play that much anymore and Hikaru Nakamura is very good now. He is one of the best players in the world. So it's, it's kind of like the class of generations between the old and the new. So let's, let's see who wins. So, uh, Gary Kasparov with the white pieces starts off with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, and knight to c3. Bishop to b4, which is the Nimzo Indian defense. And in the opening, I'm not going to go over that many, that much, um, I'm not going to go over that much, that many moves, because, um, th this is all just, um, natural opening stuff. So now we have queen to c2, castles, a3, asking what do you want to asking Nakamura what do you want to do with this bishop we have bishop takes c3 queen takes c3 and d5 this turns into the queen's gambit declined we have knight to f3 d takes c4 and now queen takes c4 well it looks like you could just play a3 as um the normal uh queen's gambit what you would do here but this is actually queen takes c4 is actually the best move uh, e3 is a good move, but uh, queen takes c4 is the best move. So after queen takes c4, we have b6, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop on this long diagonal. We have h4 expanding on the king side, and now c5. And um, c5 isn't the best move um, in this position. Uh, it is black who has the advantage in this position, and um. He kind of, uh, this is a minor inaccuracy, um, and I think Kasparov took advantage. Can, let's see if he can take advantage of this. What should have been played is bishop to a6, um, attacking the queen, and once the queen goes to a4, the bishop goes back to c to b7, and then attack on this long diagonal. But um, what was played was a, after h4 was c5, and now we have d takes c, b takes c, and h5. h6, not not allowing white to play h6. Uh, we have g4, further cementing this nice pawn on h5, which is kind of passed. Well, it's, it's not a passed pawn, but it's um very far up the board. It's not that far from que this, the queening squares. So now we have queen to d5. Asking, do you want to trade queens? And Kasparov says, okay. Queen takes d5, knight takes d5, and another minor inaccuracy. What should have been played is just e takes d5. After e takes d5, the game would have continued. And um, I guess you have a nice, you have uh, uh, pretty good pawns here. They're connected as well. And the reason why maybe knight takes d5 wasn't the best move was simply because now you just have an isolated c pawn and... It's not as good as like maybe a, like a double um a con connected connected C and D pawns are is definitely better than isolated C pawn. So after this we have G5 and now H takes G5. G5 is very very, very interesting because um after this you're you're gonna start opening up the file H file or G file one file is gonna eventually open up and you're gonna start attacking. You're just gonna put um all your pressure on the king and after this um we have h takes g5 a bishop takes g5 and f6 and usually you're not allowed you shouldn't really play f6 but this is an opportunity and it's not the worst move in this position but certainly not the well well you, you could you could say it was the best move but it's, uh, some people would say it was the best move but it was it's an okay move f6 and now bishop back to d2 Knight to c6, rook to c1, now putting pressure on that c5 pawn, and now knight to d4, completely ignoring that threat, but just threatening. Knight takes f3, check, and f, you're just going to have to take with the pawn, and you're just going to have doubled f pawns, which isn't the best, the king is now wide open. We have rook takes e5, grabbing the pawn. Knight takes the f3 check, e takes f3, and now bishop to d7. We have rook to h4, a nice rook lift, 
by Kasparov. Rook f to b8, b4, a6, rook to d4. Now attacking the knight on d5, double attacking it. And now bishop to b5. We have bishop to g2, rook to e8, f4, and well, now um, in this position, white is better by quite a bit, but um, there there are there Kasparov could easily make mistakes here. Um, there are but and if you look at it, white's king is wide in the open. The rook is on the same file as the king, and so um, the only thing in front of the king that's blocking the king is that e6 pawn. Let's see if Nakamura can take advantage of this. f5, bishop to f3, king to h7, bishop to c3, and rook to e7, king to d2. And, um, well, in this position, king to d2 was a minor inaccuracy. What should have been played, sorry, what should have been played was rook to d2, after rook to d2 we have g6, bishop to e5, g takes h5, bishop takes h5, and the game would have continued. But instead, Kasparov went for king to d2, and now black can now play rook to d8, and it's perfectly fine for uh, white, but still, it, it, this could have been avoided. It could have been a better position for white. And now you have bishop takes d5, removing that nice little knight on d5. We have e takes d5, rook d takes d5, rook takes d5 check, rook takes d5, rook to d7, offering a trade of rooks, rook takes, bishop takes. And now, if you look at it, Kasparov is up two pawns with an advantage of 2-1 to one on the queen side. And three to two on the king side, except for on the king side there are doubled pawns. But the good thing is that the, the good thing is that uh, Nakamura has a light square bishop. The only pawn that's not on a light square, the only thing that's on not only piece on the board that's not on the light square for white is this H so H five rook. I mean not rook pawn. So let's see what. Kasparov does. We have king to e3, g6. Now asking, what do you want to do with that pawn? Do you want to trade pawns? And um, that would be good. But now we have h6. And now this is very weird because in this position, what should have been played is just simply h takes g, and that would have been the best move. But this is a piece, I mean, a pawn sacrifice, and I don't think there was any need for it. We have king takes a6. King to d4, king to h5, king to g7, king to c5, and king to h5 was a mistake, not an inaccuracy, but not a blunder. It was just a mistake, and this and and um, it, it's hard to say, but this might have lost Nakamura the game, because um, what should have been played in this position was actually king to g7, um, going from the h file to the G file, and after this we have king to c5, check, a discovery by the bishop, king to f7, king to b6, and now the game would have continued. But instead we had king to h5, and now we have king to c5, king to g4, bishop to d2, king to f3, king to b6, and now bishop to b5. In this position, a4. And um, I, I guess... Another pawn sacrifice, which was not necessarily in a way, because you're just offering that a4 pawn, and it's best just to capture. Because, um, well, um, but again, Nakamura says, I don't know, I think that Nakamura might have been in time trouble here, I'm not exactly sure. But after a4, we have bishop to f1. And, um, uh, again, the best move would just be to take on a4, but this is also a good move. It, it, it doesn't really harm your position that much, but still, you really should have um, just took an a4. And it, it could, the game could have been better, maybe. Um, it's hard to say, actually. Because you could have just took on a4, but then you would leave your a6 pawn hanging. 
and um, well, technically you could it would it would be very tight. Anyway, after this we have b5, and um, wait, well, uh, yeah, I just explained to you that why this should have happened, and then after a quick trade, this king could have just gobbled up some pawns, and the game would have. Probably easily, Hesbar would have easily won, but still, Nakamura could have put up a fight. But after this, we have b5, a takes b, a takes b, king takes f2, now king to c6. And um, it's very hard to stop this, it just goes boom, dun, dun. Unless you capture right now, or you, you capture when it reaches the b7 square. So after this, we have bishop to c1, um, king to e2. Bishop to c1, king to d1, bishop to a3, king to d2, oh sorry, king to d2, and now bishop to e7. And in this position, Nakamura re re resigned the game. So it, it was a pretty cool game, because it, it started off with the Nimzo Indian, and in the end, uh, in the end, uh, Gary Fasfarov proves that he is still good. And uh, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment on it below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.